people will be able to watch this um, uh, exchange who might not be familiar with your work yet. So just being able to understand the distinction between the physical world and the corporeal world. And the physical world is, uh, you define it to be the world as the physicist sees it, right? Yeah. And not just sees it, but measures it, right? Conceives of it Conceives as a physicist. It. And it, it's really the world that can be measured. Right. Right? And so through instruments. Yeah. And that's distinct from the corporeal world where, you know, which you've got this perceived. table, which is perceived. And um, there are probably some people who will be watching this who haven't seen your movie yet. But there's a wonderful illustration in the movie um, of Descartes. And uh, it's like a cartoon, you know, almost like a paint by numbers scene, right? And then uh, the birds are flying and the colors are there and Descartes is thinking. Yeah. And, uh, and then all the color falls He's away. Sucking it is, into his is head. sucked into his head, right? Because those are things that you can't measure. And so they were relegated to the subjective mind. Yeah. Right. And became really locked into this idea of subjectivity yeah. and also kind of established this separation where, you know, my truth is not your truth. And, you know, we all have this kind of inner experience that we can't measure, we can't quantify. Yeah. And I don't know what's in your head and you don't know what's in my head. Um, and so that became, because it couldn't be subject to scientific verification, um, it really became kind of like a second-class citizen yeah. in the human experience, yeah. right? And so the physical world is this world of extension, of things that can be measured. And then the corporeal world, though, is the world that, that you and I are experiencing, that we have a common experience in. And even though we can all agree that the grass is green, um, somehow the fact that we can't actually measure that the grass is green um, prevents us from having, from calling it real and, and dismissing a certain whole dimension of human existence. Just like you said, you know, a physicist hugging his child yeah. isn't just hugging yeah. quantum particles. Yeah. And they don't see it that way. They no, love this their is, child. Uh, uh, I, in my writings, I use the word bifurcationist. It was coined by Alfred Whitehead. Mm -hmm. Bifurcation is this idea that the totality of reality splits into two parts. There is the outer world, the real world, made up of rest, uh, extens extended entities, right. but bereft of all qualities, all qualities are subjective. They belong to what right. Descartes calls res cogitans, or a thinking entity. Mm -hmm. And so there is the splitting of the, well, I, I shouldn't say the world, because according to this world, the world is the outer world, the, the made up of res extense. In a sense, the other half, where it's a sort of an illusory subjective domain, right which strictly speaking isn't quite real. Yes. So this is a bifurcationist view of reality and it is not only scientifically unprovable, but philosophically it is absurd. <laughs> All the great philosophers, past, present, and I imagine future, uh, take exception to this because uh, it is philosophically untenable. And in fact, Whitehead, who introduced this idea of uh, bifurcation, the terminology at least, he went around in England to Cambridge University and all the centers of learning, lecturing on this and showing how uh, science has become incomprehensible because of this assumption of bifurcation, but uh, the, the physicists didn't listen.